So we just want to share that with you today so you guys can see what it what it looks like as online English teachers traveling the world, how many things we have to take with us, what a mess it can be, and so you get to see behind the scenes today. Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Hello. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. We're not actually going anywhere or adventuring today. We just wanted to share how our process and thinking goes when it comes to choosing where to stay as online English teachers. As you may know, we do teach for a company called Say ABC. And working for Say ABC allows us to travel and make money at the same time, which is awesome. And this week or the next couple of months we're going to be in Bali. So we're actually going to be staying in a villa with friends. So this isn't the normal kind of place that we'll be staying in. But this week it's a little bit more lavish for, for us fortunately because we get to share the costs with a couple of friends. But we did have to go and think about a few things uh, when it came to booking this place. So we just want to share that with you today so you guys can see what it what it looks like as online English teachers traveling the world, how many things we have to take with us, what a mess it can be, and so you get to see behind the scenes today. So we are no longer in Ubud anymore, we are now in... Uh, kind of between Seminyak and Changu. In Omalas, and we are sharing a villa with our two friends Alex and Natalia for a week. And we normally wouldn't be able to afford this kind of villa because it's quite expensive. We did book it on Airbnb, so you do get a discount if you book for a month. But it still wouldn't be in our price range. So um, in Bali, most people share big villas with a whole bunch of friends and that cuts the cost down tremendously. And that way you can have your own pool, you can share this great big house with people and it's just awesome. So let's show you around the villa first of all and then we'll show you where we are going to set up our teaching our teaching station our teaching teaching stations yeah. so you walk in on these beautiful stepping stones and to the right we have our first bedroom each bedroom has a queen size bed and its own private bathroom with a sink and a shower and a toilet then we have the common living space we have got a couch with a TV and the internet router right over there which is one of the most important things when looking for a villa but we'll talk about that just now. And we've got the kitchen with everything we need. They even have a blender and a water dispenser. And then there is a little dining room area here which will actually be our one workspace. Uh, I think Rhett will come and teach here. Yep, but we'll talk about that a bit later. And then let us show you the second bedroom. Okay. Yeah. These stones are so hot. <laughs> and this is the second bedroom. Pretty much the same thing, except this one has a window looking out onto the rice field. Okay, so the first thing that we look for in our accommodation uh, that is important for teaching is, number one, it has to have two workspaces. A minimum of one workspace for it to edit at and teach at and then a basic area for me because I actually purchased a laptop stand tray thing that goes on top of the bed or on the floor and I can put my feet underneath it and set up my laptop on top I will show you and I can set that up pretty much anywhere as long as I'm near to a plug point that I can charge my laptop whilst teaching. The second most important thing that we look for is good Wi-Fi. So we generally always ask the host for speed test of their speeds to make sure that the internet is good enough for us to teach. For say ABC they require us to have 20 megs down and 4 megs up. This villa actually has like 40 megs down and 30 megs up which is Awesome. Most villas actually have above what we require and it's also preferable that the modem or the internet router is actually accessible so that we can plug our laptops into it directly through ethernet cable but we do have a special little magic tool that we can share with uh, online teachers that actually takes away that problem because not all hotel rooms and Airbnbs actually have an internet router for you to access. And the third important thing that we look for in uh, our accommodations is good lighting because while we're teaching we don't want it to be dark because the students won't see us 
We do have lamps that we can set up that are actually battery powered. They don't plug into the wall, so if there is a power failure or something, we put those things up. But it would be preferable to have natural lighting in the room. So now we are going to show you how we set up our little teaching stations, as well as the very helpful tools that we have picked up along the way that make teaching online way easier for us and a little bit less stressful. Because teaching online actually can be stressful. I mean, you rely entirely on technology and internet. And power failures, oh my word. That gives me such anxiety because if we have a power failure, we need to have backups in order to carry on teaching. So let's go set up my teaching station in the bedroom. I have chosen to teach down there on the floor. So basically, I'm going to put my posters on this wall. I'm going to have my tray here and I'm going to sit on the floor. The plug point is right over there so we can charge my laptop whilst teaching. The lighting is pretty good in this place. It's very lit up, so that's not an issue either. Okay, so this is where things get a bit uh, messy with online teaching. Since we're teaching and traveling the world full time, we have a lot of stuff. A lot of technology, a lot of clothes, and a lot of bits and pieces that we need to teach, such as posters and props and all that. So things are quite messy when we travel and can be a bit cumbersome, but we're gonna show you now some of the stuff that we have and start setting up now. So this is one of our bags with some of our technology, LAN cable, if we're far from the modem we need that, headset, very important for teaching, and this is one of the lamps we picked up, we each have one of them, we'll show them in action shortly, extension cord, really helpful, we've got a little neck stand here which is an amazing thing to prop up our laptops on, so that can go on top of Claire's tray here which she'll show you in action shortly, but I use this on my desk and that really, really helps with my posture and just to get the computer on eye level so I'm not looking down on the kids. So this is the laptop stand that we picked up on Lazada in Vietnam for barely anything. It was like $30. It folds up pretty nice and neatly and compactly, so this is how it works. We put that leg out, that leg out. We extend them and then we flip them over it's a nice tray like this. You can actually put this stand on top and you can teach standing up which is really awesome and actually a really good idea. Otherwise what I do is I take this little stand and I put them on the floor like this and this is how I teach. I will put something here to put my mouse on so that I don't wobble the table. But my laptop goes here, lamp here and I'm all set up. Posters behind me. I can also have all my props around me. Easy access. And my feet can extend forward if they want. I like sitting like this though. But we'll show you what the teaching station looks like when it's fully set up. Okay, my station is all set up. Got my table, stand, the Mac is ready. Got my lights here for extra facial lighting. Got the display and headphones and obviously with a lot of the online English teaching companies you have to have your connection via Ethernet not Wi-Fi so that's another thing to worry about is the distance from the modem or the router needs to be pretty short unless you can we've also got a very long cable for those occasions where the router is very far yeah you have to have that I'm all set up let's go see Claire she should be ready as we start in about 40 minutes so this is my setup. We've got the desk, we've got all my puppets at the bottom here. Finger puppets and hand puppet, although I don't really like using them. It's not really in my personality to use them. I just show them. I don't put on funny voices like a lot of the teachers do. And then we've got the next stand here with my MacBook on. The laptop is charging because it loses battery pretty quickly. I've got my headphones here and my mouse and mouse pad is here on this <laughs> suitcase we improvise i've got my lamp that i can actually adjust and move so i would generally put it like this and put it on and then it's charged by the drone battery <laughs> uh, usually a power bank but the drone batteries we use as power banks finally and most importantly is this little dude here this is called a slate what it does is it basically takes the Wi-Fi and it compacts it into this little thing and, and it pushes. <laughs> I 
I think she'll leave it to the technician to yeah. explain how the slate works. <laughs> Basically, it takes the Wi-Fi, compacts it into this, and then you you plug your MacBook into this little guy, and it looks like it's connected via Ethernet, and it's got a much stronger connection than what Wi-Fi would be. Basically, it just makes the connection way stronger and way more stable. So the slate comes in handy if you're going to be at a hotel or Airbnbs and you can't get your hands on the router. The slate can act as a Wi-Fi repeater so it connects to the Wi-Fi network that you can pick up on your phone and it actually has a much stronger signal than your phone. And then from the slate you can then plug an Ethernet cable into it and you can plug two cables in. So both of us can plug Ethernet cables into the slate and run them to our laptops and we have an Ethernet connection just like that. It's really really good. As a secondary function it connects tethered to your iPhone, your iPhone's hotspot so if you have a very good 4G or LTE network in the area you can tether your iPhone to the slate get a nice 30 meg line speed on that and then plug your ethernet cable straight in and you've got an ethernet connection that way too so if the power goes down we are off the grid we can teach over LTE we've got our lights it's it's really really good so it's made traveling a lot less stressful to worry about you know how we're going to connect to modem where how far away is it all of that stuff is completely taken out of the equation a third function of the slate is it can actually have a vpn attached to it so it's extremely good for security if you're going to be going in and out of a lot of hot spots like in cafes and things and airports you can connect the slate to the wi-fi in the area and then connect your mac to that and you'll be so much more secure very very handy for streaming um, series and just having the overall security that a vpn gives you so highly, highly recommend you get a slate if you are an online teacher. I'll put a link in the description to the Amazon link that I used. It cost us 69 US dollars. Very, very worthwhile purchase for us. Almost want to buy a second one just in case something happens to the first one. It's just so valuable for us. Right guys, so we're going to end the video here. We hope that we could give you more of an insight into our lives as online teachers. And we hope we can inspire you to actually go ahead and start teaching online. It's the best thing we've done in a long, long time. I think you'll agree with me. Of course, the location independence is just so, so awesome to have to be able to travel around the world. It is a little bit stressful because you've got to worry about all these things but once you you know give yourself enough time to get all set up it can be really really awesome and it's a really good stepping stone into the life of a digital nomad it's easy most people can do it and once you've got the hang of being location independent and working online then you can start forming your own businesses and all that good stuff i mean it leaves you a lot of free time during the day because we only teach from 6 p.m till 9 p.m gives you a lot of free time during the day to focus on other things if you are interested there are links below to TESOL courses that we went through in Vietnam and the referral links to say ABC so if you are interested in signing up you can grab one of those links and go ahead and also if you need any help please leave a comment below we have absolutely no problem answering any of your questions we just love to interact with you guys and help out wherever we can so go ahead and do that but otherwise we're gonna close off here hope you guys enjoyed it and don't forget to leave a like and subscribe because we'll be traveling a lot in the future going all over the world so follow along on this adventure and we'll see you in the next one goodbye Bye. we are going to uh, 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 uh. hold on what am i saying again <laughs> this is going into the <laughs> the, the boo boo section at the end uh.